A young boy, who appears to be the protagonist, Shiki, is looking at the night sky with his grandpa. Apparently, his grandfather is a robot. We are both confused as to how that is, but we will get to know about how a machine turned out to be our little man's grandfather. Shiki's machine friend Michael is also with them. Shiki is told about space and everything out there. There is said to be someone called Mother out there in space that is capable of granting any wish you want. Shiki also receives a lecture on the importance of friendship. His grandfather tells him to cherish anyone who is ready to sacrifice themselves for Shiki. Watch out for Shiki because it turns out that he is afraid of bugs. Years later, a social media content creator, Rebecca, and her cat, Happy, arrive on the planet where Ashiki is living. The name of the planet is Granbell, and apparently, all of them are machines except Shiki. Rebecca is welcomed to the planet because she is the first guest they have had in years. Rebecca reveals her plan to make content on the planet. Shiki shows up, and he is so delighted to see a human like himself. He touches Rebecca in all of her big fluffy places before Rebecca reprimands him. Rebecca tries to run away from him, but Shiki keeps showing up in every corner. Shiki is hell-bent on making Rebecca his friend. Rebecca asks some of the machines and they told her that Shiki is the only human on the planet. All of the machines are also Shiki's friends. Turns out that Shiki is taking his grandfather's words literally when it comes to friends. This is the reason he is trying to add Rebecca to his long list of friends, but Rebecca doesn't think it works that way. While everyone is having a merry time, a scout runs to inform a Thanos-looking dude of Rebecca's arrival. Turns out that Mr. Fake Thanos' name is Lord Castellan. Later that day, Michael tells Rebecca that the Demon King found Shiki and raised him. Shiki has been fixing the machines ever since, but when the Demon King developed a fault, he couldn't fix him, and the Demon King stopped functioning. Turns out that the Demon King was the one Shiki knew as his grandfather. The following day, Shiki wakes up after a long nap to find out that our Thanos imposter robot has tied Rebecca and her cat. All the other robots have started showing enmity toward Rebecca also. They claim that humans have always treated them as interiors. Shiki protests that they have been his friends for a long time, but Castellan lets him know that they have been deceiving him. All the repairs he claimed to have done have been carried out by the planet's auto repair system. Turns out that Shiki's life on the planet with the machines has been a scam. Shiki already considers Rebecca as her friend and tries to stop the machines from killing her. The machines turn on him and start beating him up like a drum. Rebecca starts crying when she sees this, and Shiki activates his ether gear power when he sees Rebecca in tears. He remembers his grandfather's words and goes after Castellan. Rebecca is surprised to see a human wielding such power. Turns out that Aether Gear is a power of the Dark Ages, and it is uncommon. Shiki breaks Rebecca free after knocking Castellan to the ground. He uses the Aether Gear to activate a gravity pull that drags him, Rebecca, and Happy to the ship they arrived on. Rebecca then launches the ship into space. She explains to Shiki that they are now in Sakura Cosmos. Her ship is capable of flying through space, and this explains how she got to Grand Bell Planet in the first place. Rebecca reveals that the name of the planet she comes from is the Blue Garden. The ship flies past a dragon that has always been visible from Grand Bell Planet, but they usually mistake it for a comet. Back on Grand Bell Planet, it turns out that Castellan and the rest of the machines only did what they did to get Shiki off the planet. Apparently, the machines would stop functioning soon and they don't want Shiki to lose all of his friends. With pain in his voice, Michael loses all sense of functioning. The central core system indicates that all bots on planet Granville have now ceased to function. As they travel through space, Shik makes up his mind to make more friends as possible. He still counts Michael and the rest of the machines as his friends. Rebecca shows him the site, B-Cube, where she posts content on. Users of the site are called B-Cubers, and they do come there to watch interesting videos and content. Rebecca offers Shiki the chance to be her bodyguard. She does visit dangerous places all in the name of making content, and having Shiki around will count as protection. Shiki agrees to the deal immediately. Before anything else, Rebecca tells Shiki that he needs to be registered as an adventurer first at Planet Blue Garden. They soon arrive at Blue Garden, and they make their way to Starlight, the adventurer's building. Shiki is surprised to see many humans, and he talks about how he would like to make all of them his friends. He looks up and sees a hologram of Mother being displayed in the middle of the building. Shiki runs to the image and begs her to grant his wish of making everybody his friend. Rebecca stops him and explains to him that what he is looking at is just an image of the Mother. No one has really seen Mother. She is said to be the supreme being of the cosmoses. However, an adventurer once traveled past the Sakura cosmos and accidentally found Mother, but that is all they know about Mother. Shiki looks up and says there's a feeling telling him that he has actually met Mother before. When all of the adventurers in the building hear this, they burst out laughing that Shiki must be crazy because how could he have met Mother? Even with the way they are laughing at him, Shiki still extends his offer of making the adventurers his friends. This causes them to laugh more because they have not seen someone as dumb as Shiki. Embarrassed, 
Rebecca drags Shiki out of the building. She asks if Shiki has truly met Mother, but he says it's just a hunch and he isn't sure. Shiki then learns that not everyone is ready to be his friend. There are bad people and there are good people. Shiki needs to understand this concept. Speaking of bad people, a crook suddenly appears and kidnaps Happy. This takes Rebecca back to memory lane of how she met Happy in a dark alley when she was still a kid. She took Happy in and took care of her even though Rebecca herself was an orphan girl too. Shiki gets mad and activates his ether gear to chase after the crook that kidnapped Happy. Shiki catches up to the guy and throws him off his bike. The guy threatens to shoot Happy if anyone comes close to him. It is revealed that Rebecca was the one that named the cat Happy when she found her. Rebecca was happy that she finally found a friend and she named her Happy. Moments later, Rebecca gets to the scene where the crook is holding Happy hostage. To make things worse, the crook's friends also arrive and they all recognize Rebecca as the B-Cuber. A fight ensues between Shiki and the crooks and during the fight, Rebecca has a flashback. Happy once got into an accident that almost claimed her life, but she was put together by a certain professor. Turns out that Happy's body is now made of machine parts. As the fight rages on, Happy transforms into two pistol blasters and Rebecca uses this to eliminate the crooks. Shiki sees this and wonders why Rebecca still needs a bodyguard. It turns out that some humans also have mechanical parts. Now in space, a certain armored space pirate, Elsie Crimson, is informed that the Demon King's grandson has left Granbell. When Elsie hears this, she tells her crew that their new destination is Blue Garden. After getting Happy back and getting rid of the crooks, the group returns to the Adventurer's Building. They meet with the receptionist, Clarice Lair, who is also Rebecca's friend. Rebecca asks if Clarice can register Shiki even though he has no identification on him, and she says yes. As they walk through the lobby, the Adventurers make fun of Shiki again. Just then, a popular B-Cuber, Labilia, shows up. Everyone in the building started going crazy when they saw Labilia. Labilia's rude nature reveals itself when she starts trash-talking Rebecca. She makes fun of her that she is just a low-rank B-Cuber that will never get to her level. Apparently, most of the people watch her videos and this has made her a lot of money. Shiki wants to make her pay by throwing her around, but Rebecca stops him. Later on, the group visits a restaurant to get something to eat. They are served delicious chicken and Shiki compliments the taste as he munches down on the meat. As they eat, Shiki's adventurer card is ready, and Rebecca prints it right there. Shiki is surprised, but Rebecca lets him know that all they make use of is the ether tech just like his power, the ether gear. Shiki's current rank is E, and that is the lowest rank. Because Shiki doesn't have a family name, his last name is registered as Granbull. Thinking of very good content that the people will love, Shiki suggests that they visit Mother. Since no one has ever seen her, it will sell for great content if they find her. Rebecca agrees, but they need a better ship. To build a better ship, Rebecca says they need to visit the professor who fixed Happy. After the team left Blue Garden, Elsie arrives and makes her way to the adventurer's building to find Shiki. One of the adventurers tells her that he had Shiki and Rebecca talking about visiting planet Noma. Elsie is surprised because, to her knowledge, Norma is a dead planet. While they are traveling through space, Shiki offers to pilot the ship. Rebecca initially refuses, but later agrees when Happy suggests that it will make good content. An amateur piloting a ship does sound like good content. Rebecca doesn't want him to land the ship initially, but she agrees again because of content. Shiki pressed all the buttons together and they ended up crash landing. When they get out of the ship, Shiki uses his ether gear to make the ship lighter, and he removes the ship from the buried ground. Shiki looks up and sees a whole load of pole-like structures falling from the clouds. Rebecca explains that Norma's weather is not normal like the rest of the planet. The poles are crystals of Earth ether. The Earth ethers crystallize and fall from the sky. They eventually circulate back to the sky just like rainfall. Rebecca finally explains what ether is. Ether is considered the source of all power. It's the force that flows through humans, the atmosphere, and machines. Unofficially, it's also known as magic. Ether is a power that everyone holds and it's not counted as something too complicated. However, ether gear is the power that rearranges the flow of ether, flowing inside the body like a machine. When Shiki hears this, he immediately classifies himself as a mechanical mage. With the structure of the planet, Shiki is surprised that anyone is living there. Rebecca reveals that the surface is not friendly, and this is the reason they have built the entire kingdom underground. They get underground, and Shiki can't believe that the planet is thriving just like every other planet. They soon find their way to Professor Weiss's house. They didn't find anyone at home and started looking around. Just then, a young man shows up, points a gun at them, and demands what they are doing in his house. He reveals that his name is Weiss, but he is not a professor, and he doesn't know Rebecca or Happy. Weiss asks if the team is working for Sabir, but they don't even know who that is. Just then, Shiki notices that someone is on the roof. He uses his gravity power to pull the unknown person down from the roof. When Weiss sees the person, he gets on his bike and zooms off. The guy counts Shiki and his friends as associates of Weiss, 
and tells them that his boss will punish them for their betrayal. Later on, the team tries to figure out what happened at Weiss's house. Rebecca says the Weiss they saw looked like a younger version of Professor Weiss. They soon realize that they are 50 years back in the past. Everything dawns on them when they see a broadcast from 50 years ago about the creation of the Adventurers Guild. Happy tells them that their current normal timeline date is Cosmic Era X 492, but when they see the date on the planet, it reads 442. This made them realize that the Weiss they saw is actually the Weiss they are looking for, but he is not a professor yet. Rebecca also remembers Professor Weiss telling her that the planet is dying. Suddenly an ugly looking guy controlling a huge robot shows up. Turns out the ugly dude is Sabir. Sabir tells the team to return the money Weiss stole from him. Shiki cannot believe that Weiss was a thief when he was younger. Sabir attacks the team with his robot, but Shiki knocks out the robot with one punch, giving them the avenue to escape. Turns out that Shiki doesn't even know the extent of his powers yet. The team goes to a bar to get something to cool off and think about their precarious situation. While they are eating, a man enters the bar and sits beside them. Turns out the man is the professor, and both parties are surprised to see each other. Weiss finally calms his mind when he realizes that the team is working with Sabir. Rebecca shows him a picture of his future self, and Weiss cannot believe that his perfect hairline will later recede in the future. He tells them to go back to the future, but the team doesn't know how. Shiki steals the case Weiss brought in. Apparently, this is the case that Weiss stole from Sibir, and it is said to contain money. Suddenly, Shiki loses his powers and the case opens. A small robot girl appears from the case. She identifies herself as Pino and reveals her willingness to do anything her master says. Pino reveals that she is basically an EMP, explains the reason why Shiki lost his powers. However, her electromagnetic pulse system only works for a few seconds, and everything will go back to normal afterward. Weiss is surprised that the case was housing a robot and not money as he believed. Pino says Sabir is her new master after she made her remove memories of her old master who created her. Pino takes off to find Sabir, and Weiss follows with the aim of making enough money off of the robot by selling her. Rebecca remembers what the future professor Weiss usually says. Don't ever steal no matter what the circumstance is. Rebecca is shocked that a younger Professor Wise was actually a thief and crook. After Weiss's departure, the bar attendant tells Shiki and Rebecca that Weiss was in cahoots with Sabir before. They had a fallout and Wise decided to steal the case. The team leaves the bar and starts to think of what to do next. Shiki shows Rebecca a cube he found inside the case and suddenly the cube projects a video. They see Sabir torturing Pino and forcing her to recognize him as her master. Shiki is furious when he sees this and promises to deal with Sabir. Rebecca doesn't want them to do anything before to avoid creating a time paradox, but she couldn't leave Pino in the hands of Sabir. They also find schematics inside the case that indicates that Pino is actually from the future just like them. Pino finally makes his way to Sabir's hideout, but the gang doesn't realize that Weiss has followed the android too. Meanwhile, Shiki and his friends are also on their way to the hideout. Sabir is about to take off Pino's second leg as punishment for being missing when Weiss appears and kicks him in the face. At that same time, Shiki and his friends storm the building on a motorcycle. Shiki uses a gravity wave to pull the crooks to him and knock them out with a punch each. Weiss takes Pino and escapes from the building with the bike the team just entered with. Sabir activates a booby trap that releases a heavy metal bar. The metal bar is about to fall on Rebecca and Shiki, but Shiki pushes her out of the way and the bar falls on only him. Sabir gets into another of his robots and chases after Weiss and Pino. Sabir leaves his trusted generals, the Foot Brothers, to take care of Rebecca. Rebecca is scared that Shiki is dead already. She starts to punch the metal bar in hopes that Shiki will appear from underneath like a movie star. The Foot Brothers show off their synchronized feet and Rebecca realizes why they call themselves the Foot Brothers. Elsewhere, Shiki finds himself in the midst of damaged robots and their parts. He sees a damaged robot that looks like Michael, and he gets emotional. The robot powers up and reveals that he is not Michael, but Johnny. Johnny understands why he would mistake him for Michael. Turns out that the model of robots was mass-produced, and Michael is one of them. Johnny is surprised to see Shiki caring for a robot. He reveals that Sabir usually treats them like trash, and he dumps them down here whenever he is done with them. Shiki tries to fix Johnny but remembers what Castellan told him about everything being a sham. He was never the one fixing the robots. Everything was just an act. Shiki watches on helplessly as Johnny loses all functionality and shuts down. On the other hand, Sabir is still chasing Weiss. He fires a rocket that throws the bike off balance, causing Weiss, Pino, and Happy to fall to the ground. Back in the hideout, the Foot Brothers are busy tormenting Rebecca when Shiki emerges from under. He uses just one attack to knock out the two brothers and quickly leaves the hideout to find Pino. 
Sabir is about to hurt Weiss and Pino when Shiki shows up to save the day. With a powerful attack, he kicks Sabir out of the robot. Sabir gets angry and activates his reinforced arm. Weiss reveals that he was the one that made the arm and it is quite powerful. Shiki flies towards Sabir, but Sabir punches him in the face, and the attack surely does some damage to Shiki. However, Shiki's determination to protect his friends is strong, and he returns the favor with a more powerful attack that passes through Sabir's body like electricity. Sabir's robot holds Shiki and tries to choke him out, but Pino activates her EMP power and knocks out the robot. Weiss finishes off Sabir by hitting him with a medal. Pino thanks Shiki for saving her, but this is just part of what Shiki does for anyone that is his friend. After the dust has settled, Pino reveals that Sabir was using her abilities to enter military facilities and steal androids of all kinds. The police have been informed of the crime, and they are on the way. It is now in question to find who Pino's actual master is. The team needs to find Professor Weiss before they can answer that question. However, the team needs to leave the scene to avoid being arrested because of their lack of identity cards. Weiss is planning to stay behind before, but he quickly runs away when he learns that the police are also on the hunt for him because he was part of Sabir's crew. The team makes it to their ship and decides to travel to Blue Garden and ask the guild for help on how to go back to the future. They soon realize that the police are after the ship too. They get to the planet's atmosphere but cannot get outside the planet because there is an unknown energy pushing the ship backward. Just then, Wise appears from where he has been hiding. He offers to help if the team will give him the ship. Rebecca doesn't want to, but Shiki reminds her that they are aiming to get a better ship either way. Wise reveals that he can use Ether Gear too. His own ability is the Machine Maker which enables him to reprogram any device or machine. This explains why he was able to repair Happy in the future. While his own power is the Machine Maker, Shiki's power gives him the ability to manipulate gravity. Weiss uses his power to rewrite the ship's capabilities in real time to be able to get them out of the energy field. Just as they get out of the planet's atmosphere, Rebecca receives a call from Professor Weiss. This comes as a surprise to everyone, and they are confused. Professor explains that the planet has been banned from the list of planets that you can travel to. The professor says anyone who enters the planet will be caught in another timeline, which is 50 years ago. The planet got its time stolen by a space creature known as Chronophage. The creature devoured 50 years of the planet's time to be exact, and this is why Norma is 50 years back in time. To make things worse, Norma will never be able to go back to normal again. Professor had escaped before the creature attacked the planet. Professor sees Pino and reveals that the Demon King is her master. Turns out that Shiki's grandfather is Pino's master after all. Professor Weiss sees his other younger self and tells Rebecca that there is no need to worry about the danger of the time paradox. Basically, the younger Weiss is not from the past, so nothing is changing. The planet only got its time stolen, so the younger Weiss would be classified as a Weiss in another timeline. The chronophage causes confusion in space by creating two parallel histories. Suddenly, the team loses connection to the call. They find themselves in the shadows of Elsie's pirate ship. Their ship gets dragged into the pirate ship, even with all the effort Weiss put into preventing it. With the help of a hologram, Elsie welcomes the team to her ship, the Skull Fairy. Elsie reveals her plan to sell off the team at Planet Gilst. Gilst was once a thriving planet, but it has now been taken over by criminals who do illegal stuff. Shiki cuts her short and says he will be the one to take over the ship instead. Elsie accepts his challenge and tells her where he is. If Shiki can get to her and defeat her, then he is free to take the ship as his own. Shiki soon runs into a horde of shape-shifting parasites that have taken over the ship. Shiki blitzes through the parasites to get to his desired destination, the ship's bridge. Some of the parasites also hold the rest of his friends, but Rebecca manages to use Happy as a blaster and free herself and the rest. Upon getting to the bridge, Shiki finds Elsie waiting for him. Shiki realizes that Elsie is a skull human, and Elsie reveals that she has been looking for the one who inherited the Demon King's powers. Elsie's aim is to surpass the Demon King. Meanwhile, the Cosmic Government Interstellar Union Army is laying a trap for Elsie and her ship. They realize that there is another Aether Gear user on the ship through the readings that they are getting. Back on the ship, Elsie and Shiki are going head to head. Elsie mocks Shiki's plan of reaching the Mother. Even the Demon King set out on an adventure to find Mother, but he couldn't. Shiki is surprised to learn that his grandfather also tried to find Mother. Furious, Shiki activates a powerful gravity and knocks out Elsie with it. He promises to do what his grandfather could not do. Suddenly, Elsie's body starts to melt. While Shiki and the team are trying to figure out what just happened, a hologram appears with Elsie's face. She reveals that what Shiki just fought is what they call a mimic parasite. Elsie has been using the ship as a warehouse, but the bugs infested it and used the crew's DNA they found to form a body of their own. Turns out that the Elsie Shiki fought was a fake and the real Elsie is on another ship. Elsie reveals her plan to give them the ship 
since they are the ones that defeated the bug that infested it. Elsie says she wanted to see how strong Shiki is before handing over the ship to him. The ship belonged to his grandfather, the demon lord Ziggy. He set out to find the mother and couldn't, but he found Shiki instead. He returned home to raise Shiki, and he made Elsie promise to give Shiki the ship when he goes out into the universe. The team looks around and sees a fleet of ships that belong to Elsie. Just then, Elsie realizes that they have entered the range where the army can fire on them. She creates a temporary barrier for Shiki and his team to escape while she and her fleet engage the army. Before leaving, Shiki tells Elsie that he now classifies her as his friend. Shiki's ship uses fast travel to leave the scene before the army could even notice. The team decides to start cleaning all the parasite spores that are all over the ship. Pino wonders why Ziggy created her and how she found herself in Norma. Rebecca uses one of the baths on the ship and realizes that the bath is able to stimulate the ether in her body. Turns out that Rebecca has an unspecified type of ether gear also. Rebecca tells Shiki and Weiss about this, and Rebecca is informed that she will need lots of practice before she can start using ether gear. Moments later, the team enters the Demon King's room. Shiki sits on her grandfather's throne and suddenly his presence activates the ship's caretaker. A door opens and the caretaker shows herself. She introduces herself as Witch, one of the Demon King's four shining stars. Witch is an android that was built by the Demon King himself, and the command over her has now been transferred to Shiki. She reveals that she has been suspended for a long time, and this is the reason the ship is in bad condition. With one command, Witch cleans up the entire ship and restores it to its shining glory. The ship transforms into a powerful-looking interstellar warship, and Witch reveals that the ship's name is Eden Zero. Witch reveals that Shiki needs to gather all the other shining stars to even have a chance of getting to where Mother is. The border separating the Sakura Cosmos from outer space is known as Dragonfall. This is an area where many dragons gather, and one dragon alone is capable of destroying many battleships, not to mention a horde of dragons. Later on, Witch informs Rebecca that Rebecca can increase her chances of using Aether Gear by using the bath regularly. She adds that she was the only one who decided to remain on the ship after they had accomplished their roles. The rest of the Shining Stars left the ship to go their separate ways. Shiki finds a giant locked door in the ship, and Witch reveals that it contains the ship's high-level secret that she is not at liberty to say. Soon afterward, the team makes it to Blue Garden. Weiss is fascinated by everything around him and decides to leave the team to go on an adventure. The team makes it to the guild, but Rebecca earlier said she won't be able to leave the ship. However, they can easily contact her through Rebecca's device. Upon entering the guild, Lobelia shows up again and starts with her usual mockery of Rebecca. When Shiki confronts her, she argues that she is only stating the facts. Lobelia reveals that she is starting to get more attracted to Shiki, who she now calls Gravity Boy. She leaves after telling the team about the photo shoot she is going for. Just then, Clace shows up to inform Rebecca that the Guildmaster wants to see her. Rebecca is shocked because she hasn't even seen the Guildmaster before and now he wants to see her. Shiki offers to follow her, but she says there's no need for it. Rebecca stands up to leave and Happy follows her. To prevent boredom, Shiki and Pino decide to take a tour around the city. Meanwhile, an unknown man has cornered Lobelia and her bodyguards. The guy knocks out the bodyguards like they are nothing. He is about to lay his hands on Lobelia when Shiki shows up at the scene. Pino analyzes the guy and reveals that his body is 60% mechanical. He is also capable of using ether gear, and his own power is wind. Now on planet Gilst, we see a business tycoon, Mr. Elega, being informed that the batch of female bee cubers that he ordered will soon be arriving. Back on Blue Garden, Shiki and the new guy goes head to head, and the new guy proves to be more powerful than Shiki anticipated. The guy used his wind power to destroy the highway, which would have led to the death of many civilians if not for the intervention of Shiki. Moments later, the guy receives instructions to leave the fight. The guy tells Shiki to find him on Gilst if he ever wants to finish their duel. Labilia thanks Shiki for saving her, and she leaves. Shortly afterward, Happy returns looking all tattered and reveals that they were attacked in the Guildmaster's office. Rebecca and the Guildmaster have been kidnapped already. At that same time, everyone finds out on the news that several B-Cubers have been kidnapped. Shiki immediately realizes that the kidnappers would be taking Rebecca and the rest to Gilst. He loudly tells his crew members to meet him on Eden Zero. Without wasting any time, Eden Zero sets new coordinates for Plant Gilst. Shiki is boiling with anger and he can't wait to rescue Rebecca. Talking of Rebecca, she wakes up to see herself amidst other popular B-Cubers. A mercenary group known as Rogue Out shows up to inform the group that they now belong to someone called Sister. Turns out that the guy that Shike fought is part of the mercenary group, and his name is Jin. 
When Rebecca hears the name Sister, her mind immediately goes to the four shining stars. One of the shining stars is Sister, and she is confused as to why Sister would turn evil. One of the mercenaries, Garnoff, tells the group that they are been taken to Gilst, to be sold to Ilega. After the departure of the mercenaries, Rebecca tells the rest of the girls how fun it is to be in their midst. She knows all of them, and usually watches their content, but none of the girls seem to know Rebecca because she isn't popular. Rebecca has under 200 subscribers while the rest have over 100,000 subscribers. Back on Eden Zero, which is doubtful that Sister is behind the kidnappings, she reveals that Sister's power is to heal and repair damaged machines and androids. Witch's job is to protect the ship, while the other two, Valerie is Eden's sword, and Hermit is Eden's heart. Basically, the four stars are Eden's life, shield, sword, and heart. Which says Ziggy might have created Pino to surpass them. While the team is discussing how to save Rebecca, Weiss shows up with an unknown woman. The woman introduces herself as Homura, and assures the team that she is not their enemy. Weiss reveals that she ran into Homura when he heard about Rebecca's abduction. Homura had heard Shiki talk about Eden Zero, and she knows that the ship belongs to the Demon King. She promised to help them get Rebecca and the rest back if Shiki would fight her. Weiss accepted the deal on one condition, but tells the team that he will be revealing the condition after they have saved Rebecca. The team is doubtful of taking Homura with them until she shows them her capability of being able to wield ether gear also. Later on, Rebecca and the rest of the girls get to Gilst, and the mercenaries deliver them to Mr. Ilega, who puts all of them inside a room. Ilega, who is frog-looking man, reveals his evil plan to the girls. He wants to make them his furniture. The girls are confused by this, and he shows them a demonstration of what he meant. By using an unspecified device, Ilega is able to freeze a girl into a stone so he can easily sit on her or do what he wants with her. He has a collection of girls that he has turned to stone already. A foam type of substance is released into the room where the girls are staying and all their clothes melt off. It doesn't take long before Shiki and his crew makes it to Gilst also. The once thriving tree ether filled planet is now nothing but a dark and cold planet. They soon find a church that appears to be Rogout's base. They enter the church and they are welcomed by Sister who identifies herself as the leader of Rogue Out. Which tells the crew that the appearance she is seeing doesn't resemble Sister, but her identification code does. Shiki demands that Sister returns all the people she has kidnapped, but she refuses. Instead, she summons an army of android to surround Shiki and his crew. Just then, Homura activates her ether gear, and it turns out to be a powerful sword known as the Soul Blade. Sister tells the androids to take care of Shiki and his crew, while she meets up with Alega to sort out payment for the recent job they did. Homura assures Shiki that she can handle the androids, and urges him to follow Sister. Shiki promises to have a duel with Homura after they rescue Rebecca. Shiki and Pino manage to grab hold of Sister's ship before she leaves. Turns out that Ilega is refusing to pay the fee they agreed upon because the mercenaries only provided 29 girls instead of 30. They even ask him to pay for the 29 he received, but he refuses. Sister arrives at the scene and informs one of the mercenaries, Moscow, to go to the church and assist the androids in eliminating Shiki and his crew. Sister plans to convert the crew members to androids after they are defeated. Up next, Rebecca realizes that they can use the foam substance that melted their clothes to find a way out. The foam can only melt cotton and glass. The room's glass window is located very high, and the girls had to form a human pyramid for Rebecca to get to where the window is. She uses the substance to break the window and create an opening for herself. She intends to go outside and find a way out for the rest of the girls. One of the girls whose channel is dedicated to food keeps reminding Rebecca to get food for them. All she cares about is food, food, and food. Rebecca soon runs into Ilega, who holds her down with his frog tongue. He's about to start hurting her when Shiki shows up. He is so furious that he knocks Ilega to the floor and doesn't even look at Rebecca. He continues beating the crap out of Ilega till Pino had to activate her EMP to temporarily take away Shiki's powers. The EMP's effect also affects the building and the room where the girls are locked. The room door gets unlocked and the girls are able to escape. The girls show up dressed in funny attires and also bring a cat costume for Rebecca. Suddenly, Jin shows up and Shiki instructs Pino to escort the girls away from the scene. Back in the church, Homura defeated all the androids. She feels an ether energy coming from the basement of the church and wants to check it out. Weiss points his gun at her and demands what her real motive is. He says he doesn't believe that all she wants is to fight the new demon king. Homura reminds Weiss that his gun can't work on her, but Weiss surprises her. He says he has retrofitted the floor with lots of machine guns while Homura was fighting. Moscow storms into the building, but he soon realizes that he chose his timing wrong. The hundreds of machine guns that are already programmed into the floor emerge and riddle him with thousands of bullets. Now on Eden Zero, Happy finally wakes up after a series of repairs have been carried out on him. 
Just then, Witch realizes that a chronophage is heading towards Gilst, and they have just 60 minutes before impact. Witch needs to take the ship down to Gilst and evacuate everyone ASAP because anyone still on the planet when the chronophage attacks will be erased from existence. Back in Ilega's tower, Shiki and Jin start to fight each other, but Shiki gets the upper hand this time around. He reveals his determination to eliminate anyone or anything that tries to hurt his friends. As the fight enrages, Sister shows up and breaks them up. That was when Jin and Shiki realize that Ilega has escaped. Shiki can't believe that Sister has turned evil. Either way, he is ready to fight her. Elsewhere, Rebecca realizes that one of the girls, Kopa, is missing while they are escaping and decides to go back for her. Now in the church, Hamura and Wise finally set aside their differences and decide to check out the basement when they hear a whirring sound coming from there. Upon getting to the basement, they see the real Sister Irvi connected to a series of equipment. Hamura tells Weiss to use his ether gear to save her. Up next, Shiki is still busy fighting the fake sister and her generals. Her generals are wounded, but the fake sister uses her power to heal them. Rebecca finally finds Ilega holding Kopa hostage. She also sees Ilega's collection of girls' statues. Ilega demands that Rebecca get on her knees and beg if he wants to save Kopa. Without hesitation, Rebecca does this, and Ilega reveals his plan to make her his personal toy. Just then, Ilega's assistant shows up to inform him of the imminent chronophage attack. Ilega laments about his collection, but his assistant reminds him that he can always start a new one. While his assistant is talking to him, Rebecca has used the opportunity to take away Ilega's gun. Before Ilega realizes what is happening, he sees Rebecca pointing a gun at him. Rebecca takes perfect aim and eliminates Ilega. On the other hand, the real Sister Irvi shows up while Shiki is fighting the fake one. Sister Irvi shows her angry she is when she knocks her imposter to the floor. Sister Irvi had come to the planet on a job ten years ago, but she was captured by the imposter and hooked to the basement. She humbly bows to the new Demon King. Now that she is awake, she can now hear Witch's voice in her head. Apparently, the four sisters are actually connected. Irvi says she needs to complete the job she came for ten years ago. She activates her power and releases a surge of energy that circulates around the city. The energy causes all the girls that have been turned to stone to return to their normal selves. After doing this, Shiki and his crew prepare to leave the planet. Shiki tells Jin that they will continue their duel at a later date when they meet again. Jin moves closer to the fake sister and crushes her head to pieces. He laments that she has been using him for her own selfish reason. Turns out that Jin has been working for the imposter on the promise that she will help his sister clean. The whole planet is now in panic and everybody is trying to get off when they still can. Rebecca shows up with all the girls that Irvi just helped, and they meet up with the rest of the B-Cubers. Which gives Pino a location where everyone is to stay and wait for Eden Zero and pick them up. Sister Irvi reveals that she is glad to hear Witch's voice again after a long time. After the B-Cubers have been evacuated from the planet, Shiki meets up with Rebecca and Pino. The planet starts experiencing reverse gravitational force, but Shiki manages to get them out. Shiki uses his gravity gear to get all of his crew members onto the Eden Zero. Damage reports start coming in about the planet. It is estimated that 1200 years was consumed away from the planet, and the level of casualties is also high. The crew sits down for a meeting. Sister reveals that she recognized Hamura's sword when she saw it. The sword belonged to Valkyrie, and Hamura affirms this. Valkyrie was her teacher, but she vanished without a trace. Valkyrie passed down the sword to her before vanishing. This is the reason Homura decided to team up with the Demon King to find her master. Upon hearing this, Shiki offers Homura the chance to be their friend. With the way things are going, all of mankind will soon become Shiki's friend. The team also manages to convince Weiss to join them on their adventure. Just then, Mosko shows up and the whole crew freaks out. Sister calms them and informs them that Mosko was her minion before the fake sister took over and reprogrammed him to be a mercenary. Sister is mad that someone put so many holes in Mosko and promises to make the guilty party pay. Weiss almost pees his pants when he hears this and can only pray that Sister doesn't find out that he is the one responsible. P.S. There is a red button that Sister has now added to Mosko's belly, and she instructs him not to push the button no matter what. All the crew members are scared, because they themselves don't even know the purpose of the button, and Sister is refusing to tell. Elsewhere, the army also received the report of what happened on Gilst. Some of the officers have mixed feelings about the incident, but some are just happy the crime-ridden planet is finally gone. However, it turns out that a man known to be very dangerous was being held on the planet, but he managed to escape during the crisis. The man's name, Draken Joe, sends chills down the spines of even the best soldiers. Draken Joe is also known as the Dark Alchemist. Now on Eden Zero, Rebecca reveals that she would want her ether gear to give her the power to have the perfect aim with guns. 
Since she now wields Happy as her personal gun, the perfect aim is the right fit for her. Clarice contacts Rebecca to inform her that she is now popular amongst the adventurers and even her fellow B-cubers. This has caused their views to also skyrocket. Soon afterward, the ship passes by Iron Hill, the Colossus of the Hero Orja. There are 12 heroes from the Dark Ages that made the Sakura Cosmos a safe place, and a huge statue has been built for them. Suddenly, Pino looks at the top of the Colossus and sees a girl sitting on it. They zoom in on the person, and it turns out to be one of the Shining Stars, Hermit. The crew immediately recover Hermit and bring her into the ship. However, something seems to be wrong. Hermit is not moving, but there are no signs of external damage. On the other hand, there her system is giving back system errors which shouldn't be so. Sister reveals that her ability can't do anything at this point and Weiss Ether Gear can't help also. Which then figures out that something is wrong with her heart. Hermit is currently in dive mode on a planet known as Digitalis. Something must have hurt her that made her choose to go to the planet. Digitalis is a virtual space and a real planet. It's a world where the physical body has no influence. To save Hermit, they will have to dive into the planet also and recover her. It is revealed that Digitalis started out as one of the servers for an MORPG called Rogue Fantasia. An incident happened which gave the NPCs the chance to rewrite the game's code. The game was abandoned, but the NPCs continued to thrive. Moments later, Shiki, Hamura, Rebecca, Weiss, Pino, and Happy all get ready to go into Digitalis. They will be able to use the same abilities they have in real life in the digital world. However, whatever happens to their digital body will affect their physical body. Basically, if they die before logging out of the game, they also die in real life. Upon entering the server, the crew is tasked to create their avatar. Happy and Rebecca choose an avatar that goes with their physical appearance. Hamura shows up in a man's body while Weiss shows up in a female body. Pino shows up in a little girl's body. As if that is not enough, Shiki shows up as a Rambo-looking man, but Rebecca forced him to recreate the avatar to fit his usual self. It turns out that Weiss and Pino would not be able to use their abilities. If they do, their abilities may rewrite the game's data and they would get banned for it. This simply means the duo is just on an excursion and is practically useless. They make their way to the nearest town, where they meet an old man who is an NPC. With the dialogue they had with the NPC, they realize that it might be hard for them to distinguish between NPC and real players. They decide to split up and gather information around town. After regrouping, they figure out that all directions point north. Shiki tells everyone to sleep and rest. They will head north the next day to find Hermit. The following day, the crew gets on their way to find Hermit. They run into a monster toll, and Shiki is already hyped for a fight, but the troll quickly reveals that he is not willing to fight them. The troll narrates that he was chased out of the town, Crystal, where he is a sub-boss. A mass murderer, Jamalov, is going around killing both NPC and real players. For some reason, Jamalov is not getting banned even with all the atrocities he is committing. The troll also makes things easy for them by revealing that Hermit is sitting on the outskirts of the town. The crew makes it into Krista and finds Jamalov carrying out his evil acts. While he is boasting, Jamalov reveals that he is one of Draken Joe's generals. Shiki is so pissed about Jamilov that he launches a ferocious attack at him, but Jamilov uses his scythe to easily dispel the attack. The scythe transforms into a monster that attacks each of the crew members, and even Shiki doesn't seem to have an answer to his devastating attacks. The team's saving grace came when Jamilov decides to leave because he has a meeting with Draken Joe. Rebecca hopes they find Hermit and get her out before Jamilov returns. The townspeople believe that the crew has successfully gotten rid of Jamilov and they thank them, but Shiki tells them the truth, that Jamilov only left because he had something to do. Moments later, the crew finds Hermit, where she is sitting alone and staring into space. Meanwhile, Hamura has told the crew that she wants to explore the town some more and would not be available to follow them. Unknown to them, Hamura is meeting with a man, Jesse, and the duo has a secret plan. Hamura reports to Jesse that Shiki already trusts her, and their plan is now in motion. Shiki asks Hermit to come with them back to Eden Zero, but she refuses. She says humans are not to be trusted, and she now hates them. She recognized Shiki as the boy Ziggy found and raised to be his own. When Shiki and the rest return to their room, thinking of ways to convince Hermit and make her follow them back to the ship. Suddenly, the town's alarm goes off, and when the team gets outside, they see a horde of monsters making their way to the town. The monsters make their stand outside the town, and the commander informs the town people that they are following Jamilov's instruction. After they have killed all the NPC and the real players in the town, Jamilov plans to kill them also. 